the change is massive. And the reason I say that is because prior to COVID, if you were a job seeker and you wanted to go ahead and explore your options, typically what you had to do was get yourself an interview, get dressed, go to some location, some company that you're interested in interviewing with, take basically half a day or a full day off, which usually meant either lying to your boss about being sick or taking some kind of PTO and going through that exercise to explore that opportunity. And if you were fortunate enough to find something that led to a second, third, maybe even a fourth interview, you had to do that over and over and over again. Pretty significant bar to be able to hit. Now consider what it's like today. Today, I can do pretty much all of those steps without leaving my house. I can do it on Zoom. I can do it on some type of technology like Zoom. I only have to get dressed up in my home. I don't have to take the PTO. I can actually do it in full view, meaning I can take 11 to 12, block it off on my calendar and do that interview. And I can even go through the additional exercises of exploring those opportunities without having to go through all of those prior hurdles. What's fascinating about that is it means that people are far more likely to take an exploratory interview and test the waters right now than they were three years ago. And what's happening is people are going out doing those interviews, finding an interesting opportunity, not so interesting that they really want to leave. But then in this climate, they're really only asked about what they're looking for salary wise versus what they're making. So they throw some crazy number out there and companies in a 3.7% unemployment market, desperate to fill that position and excited about that candidate, blink and make that crazy offer. And now what happens is that candidate is faced with a real hard decision. Am I really a serious job seeker? Or am I somebody who was just exploring? And what do I do now with this information? And in many cases, they're walking hat in hand into their boss's office and saying, listen, I'm not really interested in leaving, but I got this great offer. It's for a lot more money than I'm making right now. And if they're smart, they stop talking and they see if the company that they're working for is willing to meet them in some fashion halfway or even all of the way. So people are not leaving their jobs, but they are leveraging this crazy market and these opportunities to be able to explore without having to go full in on the whole job seeking process. Up to 2019, we tell companies, listen, stay as far away as possible from doing a counteroffer. And the reason we would do so is because at the end of the day, if somebody was committed, as I described, to going out there and going through all of those steps, they're halfway out the door already. So most counteroffers, in our view, were just stalling for the inevitable. You were kicking the can down the road. The reasons that candidate explored those opportunities and went through all of those steps are still there and they're gonna leave at some point or another. So you're just delaying it. Today, that's very different. If I am not really a job seeker, I am more a curiosity seeker to see if the grass is greener and to just explore a little bit. At the end of the day, more candidates than not, I think are coming back and not really interest, are not really interested in leaving. They're more interested in leveraging. And so a company who goes ahead and sits down with someone full knowledge that it's going to cost them more money to replace that person, take a lot of time to do so, and that they really don't want to lose that person and that person really isn't committed to leaving, that's actually not a bad counteroffer. That's a good strategic counteroffer. So our advice continues to be that our clients should consider those factors when that employee comes forward. We're also telling them not to go all the way and say someone who's a $90,000 a year person is now legitimately worth $125,000. Make a good faith effort to move those numbers higher. And I think you'll retain that person. And I think strategically, it's a better plan to try to keep those people who are proven than it is to try to replace them with somebody from the outside who's never worked for you before. <laughs>